First, um, I would like to add, I would like for you to give us your reaction of the discussion today, what you thought. Well, the, the film highlights two key parts, and one of that is the communication of, of the risk that exists down here, that exists behind other levees. People tend to take them for granted. I work on a national basis with other flood risk managers, and there are just a lot of people that don't know about it. They don't know when they drive through the area and drive through the bottoms. They don't think about it until there's a major flood and then they become inconvenienced because they can't get to the football game that they wanted to get to. Gee, I can't get to the Cardinals games. What do you mean I can't go down on the riverfront in St. Louis? I can't go check the flood wall out in Cape Girardeau. It's much more than that. There's a lot of people, as it was highlighted in the film, that there's a lot of people that get a lot out of the levees being down here. The people that drive through here, the people that get the, not just the people that farm and live down here, but everybody else as well. So that was one part of it. And the other part is, is the need for shared responsibility. So it ties in, you've, you've communicated that, you've said everybody's tied in with this, now how do we uh, get everybody else to contribute? It can't just be the farmer that farms the one field down there, it has to be a lot of people involved. Okay. So um, within the discussion, I remember you were talking about how um, when they first was the levees were built, it had some form of defect um, structure but that there was a new method with um, adding, what is it, lime? Hydrated lime. Hydrated lime with clay, but there's um, restrictions due to the policy. Can you further um, talk about that? There's a, what, what the Corps of Engineers would call as a design deficiency. In other words, when the Corps of Engineers went in to build the levee up in Grand Tower, they built it across the swamp as part of helping out the, the Forest Service that was up there provide protection for the environmental lands as well as the village of Grand Tower and the rest of the community. They took the existing clays that were in them. Those clays have what we would call have a high shrink swell potential. So they tend to, in the absence of water, you get big cracks in it, and it's very hard to compact and to work with and to have it work as a levee. And what happens then is when you've had huge cracks in it that might be five, six feet deep, it rains and then they, they slide out, so you know, with a landslide or a slough, and then you've lost part of the levee, so it won't perform. And there's also a road in the back. So the Corps of Engineers got into trying back in the 1980s, was trying to fix it piecemeal. They'd fix one slide at a time because we didn't have authorization to complete the whole repair. The method that they, we finally came upon was taking hydrated lime, okay, so the white powder stuff, we apply it to the, the, the material, we pull it all out, we spread this hydrated lime on it, so, and then we hit it with some water and then we take a rototiller, just a large rototiller, and, and till it up, and it changes it takes it from big clumps of clay into something that looks a lot more like kitty litter. And when it's done, we can take that material and roll it back in place and put it in there. And to my knowledge, I know there's other people that might disagree, but we haven't had any of those repairs ever fail. They have not slid back out. The trouble is, is we're only doing a Band-Aid approach where we can only fix, we're only authorized to fix them uh, one or two at a time, and that doesn't fix the whole system. You're just re reassessing where that risk is, where that high point's at. So we need to fix the whole thing. We're, we've got a current, the Alton McGill letter report that we're working on to revise and get authorization to fix the whole system. As of today, it's, it's still in the St. Louis district. We haven't moved it forward. Okay, that was it. I was trying to remember everything that was going on because like so much was being said. Mm -hmm. That's why I tried to like, from what you said and from what you said, you said, I was trying to be like connected. It's so that a you lot could, of information. Yes, it really, it really is. is and it's, Okay, um, so this is just like a general question, but um, I don't know. Can you, I we can't get it. But dang it, because I want it right there. Um, do you feel like the locals are, you know, have a mindset that is not really focused on the whole aspect, just on their personal, you know, aspect like my home, my land, my family is going to be wiped out if these floods instead of looking at because I remember a couple of um, residents came up and was like well if the flood if the levees break my home will be destroyed and then I remember you guys coming in and saying well it's more technical calities that you have to think about it's like we can't come in there and just save your home we have to literally look at it from like a economic standpoint as well as a policy standpoint so do you think like that's what the issue that's probably happening there was a public meeting down in Grand Tower just about a year ago because it was very cold. And they had almost 100 people show up, which was really impressive. I didn't expect to see that many people show up. And part of what came in there was there, there is, there's a lot of that, it's us against them mentality. 
and what you're seeing and what you heard tonight was a lot of different people that are transitioning that thought process of saying, you know what, we're not in it all by ourselves. And that's important for people to understand because when you start thinking it's you against the world, you can become very bitter and very vindictive and not address the problems. And what we've got now is we've got a lot of people because there, there are a lot of people working behind the scenes that maybe the people down here don't see very well. The congressional support is huge. The, the state of Illinois has a lot of, lot of supporters trying to work and find a way to get the money to address the needs. So we're, the emotional mindset of the people that are threatened by a weak levy system, they're, they're moving past that, and you're hearing that. And we stand ready to help them, no matter whether they're angry or, or not. We, we still want to work with them all. We want to be able to keep people safe.